My name is Danielle Barbera, and for my placemat, I decided to focus on the importance of dairy in diets, specifically as a good source of calcium. While dairy is extremely vital for nutrients, sometimes it is not frequently incorporated in everyone's meals, and furthermore, sometimes it's not readily available. My placemat reflects this through the milk bottle outline that we can see on the left side. I place this large weight empty space above other foods to express the importance and lack of dairy that occurs in diets. My placemat was very much inspired by the artist Joe Good and specifically his piece, The Milk Bottle and the Infinite. Good used milk bottles frequently in his work, but specifically this piece stood out to me. Its white cutout in the shape of a milk bottle shows the impact that is expressed also through the white paint which surrounds it on the blue background. I love the way this piece effectively conveyed the importance of this food group, both through its history and its traditional shape of the milk bottle, and its health benefits. While it is important to have calcium in diet, it is possible to get such nutrients through other foods, such as sesame seeds, tofu, kale, and orange peels. Thank you for listening. I hope you all stay healthy and safe during these times. Eat well. Hi everyone, my name is Alex. I hope you're all doing well. I'm sad that we're not able to have our meal in person, but I'm happy that we're still connecting online. My placemat focuses on vegetables, specifically greens, and the health benefits of them. From 1992 to 1995, the art collective HaHa ha created the Flood Project. This mainly involved a hydroponic garden that grew greens like kale and collards, as well as therapeutic herbs for HIV and AIDS patients. This became a way of providing care through community for those who were not properly getting it during the AIDS epidemic. A hydroponic garden is a garden that grows in a water nutrient solution rather than in soil. This limits any potentially harmful bacteria that could be in the soil, which become fatal for those with a compromised immune system. AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, impacts a person's autoimmune system, making it harder for their body to fight infection and disease. Now we have medication that can help with the effect of AIDS, and people living with AIDS can live a long, full life. However, back in the 1980s and 90s, there was no medication yet, so getting a proper diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables, dense with nutrients and vitamins, was the, one of the best ways to help boost their immune system. Kale and collard greens are both full of vitamins and have been associated with cancer prevention, heart health, digestive support, and lowering cholesterol. Even for people who did not have a compromised immune system, it is important to eat these kind of foods to get all of the nutrients we need, especially during these times when the, that may be more difficult due to quarantine. Hello everyone, my name is Matilda and I'm here virtually to present my placemat. I am greatly saddened to not be able to present this in person, although I am grateful to everyone that made it so we could get our work to you anyways in this time of crisis. I was looking forward to our meal together, but I hope that our work can bring insight or new ideas to your table despite this barrier. As you can see, my placemat is based on proteins. I was thinking about the importance of sustenance in this time of crisis and the nutrients that are found in proteins. Although putting these nutrients under the perspective of having to shop for several weeks in advance, my mind started thinking about the material that surrounds these foods that will eventually reach our table and how we store our ingredients. This is an important consideration that everyone is facing right now, but it is especially important for more vulnerable populations that run a greater risk in this health crisis. For these reasons, I reflected on different packaging methods and what could be the best way to preserve meat or fish and any other kind of protein without losing significantly, significantly the nutrients contained. My images are meant to clearly refer to preserving and connecting these scientifically explored topics to my artwork of choice. My research brought me to understand that the best way to consume meat is as fresh as possible since the exposure to air will let nutrients oxidize and bacteria grow, while heat treatment against this bacterial growth will further damage the life of the nutrients. My mind went immediately to Bonnie Ora Shirk's performance piece in a zoo cage, where she was consuming processed meat in a cage next to a lion, animals known for their large consumption of raw meat. I'm looking at this art in looking at this artwork I did not consider much the choice of food and regarded other parts of the performance. But my understanding of meat preservation and consumption allowed me to add another layer of understanding where Bonnie was destroying a hierarchy between humans watching zoo animals eat and the animal itself.
Furthermore, she was putting herself in the same spot as the animal, consuming something less nutritious for her body than the lion. To conclude my placemat, the best way to buy meat for longer preservation is either already purchased it frozen or to freeze it as soon after so that, that it can be defrosted when meant to be consumed, with a considerable amount of nutrients maintained. Another valid alternative for preservation would be canned meat that although does not maintain a texture or oftentimes a taste that is similar to meat and is missing some important nutrients. Therefore, I would like to thank everyone for listening and for considering my placemat during your meal. I hope you enjoy and I hope we can get into contact, contact in the future. Hi, my name is Simon. My placemat is about Erin Rung Jong's Golden Teardrop. Golden Teardrop is made up of a hanging sculpture of 5,500 brass teardrops arranged in a sphere and a 30 minute long video of a Japanese woman preparing um, Hong Yat, also going over the history of Hong Yat. Hong Yat is a Thai dessert made up of, made of duck egg yolks. Um, it translates to gold egg yolk drops, which is where the title of the art work comes from. Um, the recipe originated um, in the 15th century and it was invented by Portuguese nuns. Um, and it was introduced to Thailand in the 17th century by Maria Guiomar de Pena. Um, she was a woman of Japanese, Portuguese, and Bengali descent. She was also the wife of Constantine Falcon, um, who was a Greek man that was counselor to King Narai of Thailand. Um, because of her connection to um, Falcon, um, and through a series of other events, Maria ended up as a dessert chef in the palace, um, and she introduced multiple Portuguese desserts that involved egg yolks um, to Thailand, including Hong Yat. Um, when looking at the nutrition of Hong Yat, I mostly focused on duck eggs as an ingredient. Um, duck eggs are a good source of protein, mostly found in the egg white. Um, the amino acids that make up um, the proteins include essential amino acids, acids, which are amino acids that are not naturally produced by the human body um, and must be obtained from eating foods that have them. Amino acids are important for many different bodily functions, um, including um, maintaining bone health. The egg yolk doesn't have as many proteins as the egg white, but does contain more nutrients, such as iron and copper, which are good for your blood cells. However, the yolk also contains the bulk of the cholesterol um, fats and saturated fats in the egg. A duck egg, um, a whole duck egg, contains 619 milligrams of cholesterol, which is two to three times the daily limit. That daily limit, um, was abolished in 2015, but it is still recommended that people with um, cardiovascular conditions limit the intake of their cholesterol and fats because of the risk of either um, getting cardiovascular diseases or making worse any pre-existing conditions. Um, the fats can clog arteries and lead to those conditions. So when looking at Hong Yat, um, it is a dessert, and it is not expected that desserts have a high nutritional value. Um, but by looking at what ingredients there are, um, what is and isn't in the dessert, um, we can create a fuller picture of the nutritional value and what benefits and what risks are we gaining from eating these foods. Um, and then from there we can make more decisions about how much we eat and what we eat. Similarly, when looking at the history of Hong Yat um, and Thailand, um, Hong Yat, Thailand, and Golden Teardrop, we can look more closely at how this Thai dessert is also not just a Thai dessert because of its influences or um, the exchange, cultural exchange um, between these different countries. 
we can also um, explore the boundaries between personal histories and bigger cultural histories, where this culturally important dessert is also very closely intertwined with the history of this one person and her ancestors. So in creating these bigger pictures and looking at the benefits and risks of these foods, we can say that limiting that while there is an important there are important reasons um, or good reasons to eat these foods. Um, limiting how much you eat can also be important for your health and it being careful about what you put into your body and knowing what you are eating can help you stay healthy um, for a long time. Thank you. Hi everyone at the Greater Boston Chinese Golden Age Center. My name is Diana Lau and today I'm going to talk to you about my food placement. And it features an artist called Seitu Jones who started a project called Community, Community Meal. And it basically consisted of a community meal which invited about 2,000 people from Seitu Jones's neighborhood. And they all shared a meal together, which engaged in conversations about healthy eating and the food system around them. So there was about 2,000 people. The dinner table was placed out on the streets, on the street, and it stretched out for one and a half miles long. So it was a really long table, and you kind of see a drawing depiction of it in the middle of the placemat. And so the community mail offered an opportunity to invite people in the neighborhood to learn about the food system that they have access to and to encourage healthier food choices. He also invited the farmers and workers that locally grew and raised majority of the food that gets sold and used within their town. So similar to the community meal, we are kind of sharing the same community meal like St. Lou Jones' neighborhood. But here we have you all from the Greater Boston and Chinese Golden Age Center, the nutrition scientists, and us, the students from Tufts. So to kind of spark similar conversations about healthy food choices, my placemat provides um, some food prepping tips that can boost some extra nutritional value in the foods that you eat. So the first tip to share is about packaged frozen fruits or vegetables, how sometimes it can actually provide more nutrients than a freshly brought uh, fruit or vegetable. That's because frozen produce is often picked when it's ripe, so it offers more nutritional value, whereas a fresh produce can be picked when it's unripe yet, making it have less nutritional value. And the second tip is to smash or chop your garlic at least 10 minutes before you need to cook it in your dish. Um, so just smashing it or chopping it up and letting it sit there for 10 minutes allows for stronger antioxidants to come out and it would have been lost if you just directly put the garlic into your cooking. Um, the third tip is to add an oil or a fat source to your fruits and vegetables to allow more absorption of essential vitamins and antioxidants, the good stuff for your body so that it could get into your body. So maybe eating a salad with um, olive oil sometimes can offer you nutrition that you don't usually get by just, let's say, steaming the vegetable. Um, so those are all the nutritional tips that I wanted to share with you guys today that I learned from the nutritionists. I really wish that I was there talking about this with everyone while sharing a meal, just like how Seitu Jones did it with his neighborhood in the community meal. And 
from those conversations, I'm sure we could learn a lot from your wisdoms, the stories of how you prep your own meals. So thank you for listening to my tips and my food placement. Thank you and please stay safe and healthy. Bye. Hello, uh, my name is Brooke and I'm here today to talk about the place that I made. When I chose what to discuss in my placemat, I was considering the power of food and community healing. I aimed to create something that would not only encourage eating foods with important nutrients that come from unrefined whole grains and vegetables, but encourage creativity. During this pandemic, many are leaning on their ability to provide uh, creative solutions um, and to see, seek uh, creative outlets as sources of comfort and play. Uh, I chose to focus on whole grain crackers and discuss fun ways of preparing them, uh, like little mice and ladybugs. Uh, honestly, the possibilities are endless. Um, I, I uh, break down how to select the toppings as uh, the prompt for the uh, creation and a guideline for helpful choices um, during this process. Uh, these are broken down into fat, uh, protein and fruits and vegetables. Uh, the fat provides the flavor, texture, mouthfeel, and protein provides essential fuel for the body, and vegetables provide fiber, minerals, antioxidants. Um, I even uh, give information on how to choose the right cracker. Uh, one where the first ingredient is whole grain, with plenty of seeds and fiber, low in things like sodium, added sugars, artificial colors and preservatives. Um, this was meant to help uh, increase awareness about what people might have access to um, that they didn't realize that they could, uh, that fits those uh, categories and how they could be used um, for something fun like this. Um, the artwork that I discuss is that of the bright and beautiful plant-based colored pastas of Linda Miller Nicholson. Uh, because of its playfulness and its incorporation of grain and plant, uh, I felt that this particularly resonated with uh, the cracker creations. Um, she used the materials such as butterfly pea flowers for blue, peas for purple, uh, turmeric for yellow, and her pasta contains from the rainbows to polka dots a childlike joyfulness that I wanted to spread and even pair with a more nutritious take um, since pasta is high in refined grains which uh, lack some of the health benefits that go along with unrefined grains. Um, my vision basically was a warm cup of tea and a creative snack to heal both the body and the mind. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lex and going into this project, I was thinking about the current global pandemic that we are all experiencing and thinking about what information I wanted to be able to have and also to share with other people. So I was really interested in learning about what cheap and widely available plants and foods can help to boost our immune system and also help our bodies to fight against diseases. And I was surprised and interested to learn from talking with the nutrition scientists that garlic specifically is a food that not only boosts our immune systems but also specifically acts as an antiviral and can help aid the body in protecting itself against viruses and reducing the uh, length and severity of symptoms. How does garlic do this? Garlic contains a compound called allin that when crushed or chewed becomes allicin. Allicin is very unstable and quickly converts into sulfur containing compounds that strengthen the white blood cells in the body and help the body to fight off disease. Unfortunately, in my research I also learned that the heat from cooking garlic uh, can reduce some of the medicinal effects. So there is a lot of a recommendation to consume it raw in uh, some, some ways to do that might be in salsa, salad dressings, um, or other sauces, on toast with butter, in soups, salads, and sandwiches, etc. 
But of course, most of the time when we're eating garlic, we're eating it cooked because that's the way that it tastes best to us. So when you are cooking garlic and you really want to maximize those healthy effects, um, some things you can do are to really make sure to crush and slice all the garlic really well, to let the crushed garlic sit for 10 minutes before cooking so it has some time for some of those chemical reactions to happen before it's cooked, or in general just to use more garlic than you would usually if you have a recipe that takes one clove, maybe try using two or three. Garlic has been used as a medicine across the globe for thousands of years. It's also an antifungal and an antibacterial, as well as being an insect repellent. So knowing this, it makes a lot of sense that our another association we have with garlic is as a protector against vampires and evil spirits. Um, and this is where garlic also becomes a big part of our folklore and our culture. And through that, a big part of our art and our books and our movies. So I've been thinking about this too as an interesting example of the ways in which our lived experiences and interactions with food in our lives can also become important to the symbols in our art and our culture. So that's a little something to think about while you enjoy your food. Bye! Hi everyone! I hope you're all doing well. For my placemat, I wanted to focus on ginger and turmeric and the ways that it can help reduce the effects of inflammatory arthritis. I actually have a lot of interest in this topic because I have an autoimmune form of arthritis and find that changes in my diet can have an extremely beneficial effect on my comfort level. From my research, I've learned a lot about the anti-inflammatory properties of both ginger and turmeric. Artist Hegu Yang uses both of these items in some of her work. As seen in my placemat, Yang's series, Spice Sheets, displays a variety of spices that are important to the history of colonialism in Asia, which includes turmeric. She has another series called Cutting Board Prints, in which she dices vegetables on paper and then displays the residue that is left behind. I personally love this work because it really shows how there are always consequences to every action, whether they are good or bad. Just like nutrition, each choice that is made has direct results to your health. By making conscious decisions about nutrition, you can gain control over the results of your consumption and then use them to your benefit. Having food or drink with ginger or turmeric can have a positive impact on joint inflammation and pain. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Uh, my name is Tina, I'm a first year student at TAPS and I'm really happy here to present my placement to you. Uh, my placement is inspired by Alison Noble's art project called Make a Salad. Um, it is performed at various places around the world where a large number of people would make and share a salad together. Um, this performance not only incorporates everyday food into art, but also can be seen as a way of sharing and distributing a nutritious meal to the public. Uh, I know that salad is not as popular in Chinese or Asian culture as it is in Western culture since people with a Chinese or Asian heritage, including myself, um, are more used to eating stir-fried or cooked vegetables. But there are actually various nutritional benefits of eating salads. Um, for example, salads are often a great source for dietary fiber, which can promote digestive health and reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. Um, they also provide sufficient amount of vitamins and minerals that are essential to the human body. Uh, many of those nutrients are also more well absorbed when the vegetables and fruits are in their raw form. Because salads have these various health benefits, I want to use my placemat to introduce the different vegetables and fruits that are common in salads and provide your nutrition information. Um, so I drew an image of a salad that we normally eat. Uh, it includes various uh, leafy greens like kale, spinach, and arugula, and also other, other vegetables and fruits like carrots, corn, and blueberries. Um, salads are very convenient to prepare. I hope through my placemat you can get to know the various benefits of eating salads and maybe make a salad for yourself. Thank you!